Hey, welcome. This is Dr. John Bush. This is week nine matchup report for my process. Uh, before I get in, this is, uh, as usual, a tricky week for various reasons. There are game time decisions that are going to affect our lineups this week. Uh, Arizona certainly won with Kyler Murray. Uh, I think uh, D-Hop is also game time decision. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts. Uh, I would prepare for multiple scenarios for your team if they uh, include some of those game time decision players. There may be an issue with Chicago if David Montgomery comes back. I know uh, Christian McCaffrey is out there. Uh, you know, so trying to figure out exactly what to do and uh, in the matchups, and it's going to depend a lot on the decisions that we really can't control. Uh, these matchups are for your guidance. They are not necessarily written in stone. You have to develop the flexibility to use the matchup information when it works for you when it seems like, okay, this, this seems like I can go with this. If there's something that I say is controversial or it's not, you're not understanding, then it's an opportunity for you to get uh, deeper into research. You still have time and uh, see what you need to do. So I'm just going to give you how these metrics uh, line up and the directions that they are pointing to within the context of each game. And we'll take a look at that and see where we end up. So with that, let me roll to game one, or actually game two, game one's already been played. Game two, Sunday, Baltimore, Minnesota, 30 to 19. It should be a fairly high scoring game over and under, I think, it's near 50. The spread is about six points, roughly a touchdown. And uh, they are favoring Minna, uh, Baltimore. Baltimore is playing at home. They are, I think they're coming off a bye and uh, having a home situation. So that's good for them. They're going to be. Uh, all sorts of different ways that they can score. They have certainly the mobile quarterback, uh, whatnot. So let's see how it stacks up. So that at the top shows you the information I just said. And you can take a look at that uh, and see what you think. Uh, anytime a game figures to be high point scoring, you're probably wanting to have players uh, in that game because there should be PPR goodness, right? That's the idea. Uh, and then the next strip of material shows the, the team, the week, the opponent. So Minnesota faces Baltimore, Baltimore faces Minnesota. I went ahead and colorized the overall defensive landscape that the teams will face. Minnesota faces a, a light green situation, so it's above average easy. If it was deep green, it would be very easy. Baltimore gets a below average tougher defensive scheme. There it is. Uh, home and away, Minnesota's traveling, Baltimore is at home. 
The overall uh, defense against the position, I call that DAP, uh, for the entire offense is shown here. Minnesota faces a 69 out of 100. That's not bad. That's pretty good. It's not, you know, 100 would be the easiest. Minnesota is 54, so that's, the average is, is 57, 58. So it's, it's closer to average than really, really tough. But there are some spots, and that's the whole point of the matchup, is to find the positional spots. So let's go through Minnesota here. Dalvin Cook gets an average game, 56. Sounds good. Play him as you need. Kirk Cousins gets a 59. He's fine. The wide receivers get an average game, so that's probably Jefferson Thielen. And Conklin, 98. And I am using him in a few leagues uh, where I had TJ Hawkinson home by. Uh, you know, at this point, we're all kind of guessing with these bottom tier tight ends, but you pick your spots. And this is one of the ones I think me and others have used and suggested there, 98. Uh, wouldn't use the kicker. Uh, if you need to use a defense, you might be able to, but I would look for something better than 56. Baltimore faces a 54 overall DAP. Uh, the running game for Baltimore, I think Murray's out, so there's going to be a big split backfield here, and they all face a 28, which is fairly tough. Uh... Lamar gets a 42, so he's going to have to work a little harder, but uh, Hollywood Brown and Sanders and Bateman uh, get an 86, so they should be favored, and the scoring, you would predict uh, there would be multiple scores coming out of this position here. Uh, Andrews is going to have to work hard, so it wouldn't surprise me him not getting a score this week. But if you've got him, you know, you, you pretty much got to play him. The kicker's fine. I would not play the Baltimore defense here. An eight is a warning sign for us. Okay, so that's my matchup. So I go through it. So you can uh, kind of, if you need, you can come back and re-listen. I'm going to put this in my article. So I have a static picture of this. You can go follow. Uh, you can take notes as I'm talking and do kind of plus minus kind of situations for reminders as you're setting your league. I think the hot spots are Minnesota tied in and Baltimore wide receivers looks to me. Uh, New England, Carolina, Carolina, Darnold may not play, maybe P.J. Walker, so that adds to the complexity of the situation. New England's been New England. It's a low-scoring game, so if you've got opportunities and equal players in games that are higher scoring, then this may be a good tiebreaker. 25-17, the spread is four. It may be higher if uh, Darnell cannot play. Over-under is 41. That's low, folks. That is low. So this is, I'm picking my spots only here. Uh, Carolina faces a a below average tough New England and New England faces a tough Carolina defense here. So we're talking a 46 and a 35. So that is part of the reason why it's low scoring is uh, both these teams have fairly stringent defenses, not the most stringent, but stringent. Uh, so let's go through Carolina. It has... Uh, Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard, 57, or McCaffrey, or a combination. That's probably something that I would look to use. I would not shy away. 
The quarterback concerns me. And just remember, New England with Belichick always tries to take the big piece away, and it could be more. So maybe Anderson gets more play this week, but the, uh, the, the new quarterback and the tough defense may nullify that. You definitely not playing the tight ends from Carolina. They may luck into something, but it's not with my uh, support. Kicker's fine. Carolina defense, if you need them, play them. At a 65 is okay. New England uh, faces a 35. Uh, Harris gets a zero, folks. He's going to earn all his scores. It would not surprise me that he has a hard time scoring. And the quarterback and the wide receivers and the tight end actually seem closer to average. So it looks like Carolina is really skewed to stopping the run, but uh, a little loose on their passing. So this may be the week that Myers gets a touchdown. Uh, Henry, Sanu, they could be in play as well. So uh, there may be some opportunities there. I mean, these are not grand opportunities, but they're not a uh, runaway situation either. So if you've got them, you, you, you could play them. Uh, 71 on the DAP for the defense is definitely a good, uh, New England's a good defensive play. And again, this is supposed to be a defensive struggle. So using the defenses makes sense. Game four, Dallas, Denver. Dallas is expected to run roughshod over Denver. Uh, uh, Denver is playing away. That doesn't help. Dallas is playing at home. That does help. Uh, Dallas is predicted to what have, uh, what is that, close to five touchdowns. Uh, so you would figure Elliott's in there and the wide receivers and maybe the tight end. Uh, that would be how I'd figure. 34 to 15, uh, 10 point spread over under. 550. Uh, it's a high scoring game, and they think Dallas can overcome Denver's tough defense. That's the scenario that's thought about in this game. Denver faces an easy Dallas. Dallas faces a tough Denver. So Denver faces 62, Dallas 33. So that's tough. Uh, the wide, uh, the running backs on both teams are going to have to work hard for their scores at 32. So it may be more of a passing situation. And that may be part of the reason it's uh, predicted to be high scoring. Uh, Dak's going to be under pressure against a tough Denver uh, at 32 on the, the quarterback there. Bridgewater gets a 53. That's average. Bridgewater gets a nice passing to his wide receivers and his tight end. And if Fant can't go, the replacement guy is a solid pickup. And I picked him up where I had Fant. And I forgot the guy's name. It's a long name. And uh, Denver's uh, probably can pass. So, Right now, just how I look at it, if you look at the defense, it kind of doesn't go with the predicted score. It, it would seem to me Denver should score higher than 15. So uh, I, I'm not scared away by the prediction of 15. Uh, I will definitely be playing, uh, I think Sutton is a play, the... Uh, Whichever tight end goes is a play. Uh, avoid the kicker and the de defense for Denver. Dallas gets a 33. Elliott against a 32. Dak a 32. Uh, Dak Schultz is going to face a nine, folks. So that could be tough. That could shift the points towards the wide receivers, which is good with C.D. Lamb and Cooper and Wilson. Uh, maybe he may be a surprise play. Uh, and you definitely want to use Dallas defense uh, at 92. 
So I can see Dallas passing a lot and Elliott just keeping the defense uh, honest. And uh, Schultz, not sure he has that magical two-score week here. Uh, be lucky to get one score against a nine. So I am optimistic there will be points scored. I'm not, even though the metrics are kind of uh, suggesting a tough time for uh, Dallas, I, I think being predicted at 34 is saying they can overcome that at home, whatnot. So it depends on what you think about that. Uh, Cincinnati-Cleveland, 26-21, uh, above average, uh, 47. So there's going to be some fireworks here. Uh, OBJ is gone from Cleveland, so I think they're going to need all hands on deck on the passing and the rushing, fortunately. Cleveland, I think, has Chubb back. This could be a, a Chubb weekend here. And, uh, you know, uh, Cincinnati could be passing all day long. So this could be a really actually uh, go higher than in 47. Cleveland faces an, I'm sorry, Cleveland faces an easy Cincinnati D. Cincinnati faces a, a fairly uh, average defense, maybe a little below average here to 55. Cleveland, uh, Chubb gets a 88, should score, maybe once, maybe twice. Play Chubb all day. Quarterback looks good. Mayfield, if he can keep his injuries there, he should be able to deliver. Uh, is it People Jones, uh, Landry? I think both have an opportunity. Higgins has been getting some attention lately. So uh, this may be an kind of a contrarian stack situation here if you're wanting to gamble here. The tight ends, I know they love Hooper and Njoku, but they face a 38. They'll probably get attention, but I don't know if there's a lot of scoring from the tight ends. If you need them, play them, but uh, there's maybe other opportunities elsewhere. Uh, Cincinnati, again, faces a 55 overall defense, and Mixon fights through a 29. I could see Mixon uh, not scoring this game, and the quarterback, Burrow, should have a field day with uh, his wide receivers. Uh, you know, I don't know if Evans, the pass catcher for Cincinnati, or is it P. Ryan, is he also there? He can catch passes. Those guys may actually be in some play here. Maybe P. Ryan might get something because I think Cincinnati's going to pass and pass uh, here. The metrics say that's where they'll be doing their scoring of three or four touchdowns. Uh, the wide receivers are fine. Play them if you need them. Uh, the Tight ends are going to have a tough on both sides of the ball here. Defenses are playable, 56, 58. They're better ones, but, you know, there could be worse ones too. Six game, very interesting. Lots of uh, uh, predictions here being high scoring, and the high score means that Buffalo just romps and stomps and gets about seven what, six, six touchdowns? Jacksonville barely scrapes a touchdown. 15 points, two touchdown kind of game. It could get out of hand. If you're a Jacksonville, maybe you're hoping for uh, some garbage time fun. Buffalo gets an easy Jackson defense, 97 DAP. That's almost the easiest in the league. Uh, Robinson, if he does play through his heel injury, 54, so it's an average game, and average Robinson can score, so that's good. Uh, I'm sorry. Reverse that. Moss and Singletary for its Buffalo. Uh, 
uh, can score. Uh, it's an average game, so probably I'd favor Moss. I think he's been getting all the attention lately. But Singletary could drop in the end zone, too. This could, I mean, I think a lot of people are going to stack this in daily fantasy. So I'm not sure what opportunities are there since it's pretty obvious that Buffalo should uh, collect multiple scores. They're even playing an away game, and they're still super favored here. Uh, quarterback Allen should collect lots of scores for you. Wide receivers and uh, Sweeney, the tight end, because I think Knox is out, should collect. He's another streaming option this week if you've got some buys. So I expect lots of passing from Buffalo and pass catching from the running backs here. And uh, you want to play the kicker and the defense all day long. It's a play play all across the board for Buffalo here. Uh, yeah, Buffalo all day long. Jacksonville, tough. The, maybe the toughest in the league at a zero. Uh, Robinson injured faces a nine. I, if he plays, I would be concerned and I'm an owner. Uh, well, I guess that's not PC anymore. I, uh, I have him on my team and, uh, a nine is tough. I'd be afraid he injures more. So I am i don't know how to wish for this game here. Quarterback Lawrence faces tough. Zero wide receivers. Uh, Jones, to me, be the only one I'd really want to play too much. Tight end Arnold, two. I mean, it just looks like you want to avoid all Jacksonville uh Maybe Jones, if you got to play somebody. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, Miami-Houston. Uh, this is a kind of game where they both have sucky defenses, so easy defenses. But the offenses can't take advantage of that, even though it's still an above-average prediction and a touchdown difference. Miami's predicted, even in an away game, versus Houston. Houston is getting Tyrod Taylor, and that could turn the uh, tables on Miami. We hadn't seen a lot of Taylor. He's coming off IR, so this could, this is not as simple as it appears on paper. There's, Taylor's the, uh, Tyrod's the X factor, and there could be lots of passing and collection. Take a look at the DAPs. 86 overall, easy DAP. Uh, Houston, uh, 65. So is it Burkhead? Uh, that's the trouble. David Johnson, who's collecting? But they should collect. But it may be Lindsey. It may be a bunch of them there since uh, Ingram's gone. Uh, this would have been a great smash game for Ingram. But anyway, he's gone. So given they've cut up their quarterback crew, it, that may, we may not get to take advantage of that. Uh, play them if you've got them, if you need them for buys and injuries, but uh, they're probably better places to look. Taylor gets a 70. That's good. Look at the wide receivers. I think Cooks and Nico Collins uh, could collect score or ors. This could be more scores than you think. Could be a real interesting. The tight end is a 44. If you got to play them, I would. Uh, Aikens is the one I would play out of that. Uh, I am using him in a couple of desperation lineups there. Uh, the kicker's fine. Defense is fine if you need uh, a streamer defense. Uh, so I think Houston's going to do better than they predict. Miami at home. Losing Parker, that, that lowers their firepower, but they face an 84. I think Gaskins is, should be active and probably scores. The Tua gets a 79. I'm playing him. And Grisecki gets a 100. It's a Grisecki multiple score kind of day situation. 
Uh, is it Preston? Who is the wide receiver? Waddle, I guess. Uh, he's still a rookie. Mm, uh, I would play Preston as a long shot. Waddle, if you got him, then you play him. Kicker and D are fine as well. Seems uh, this could be a shootout game that's going to surprise folks here. I think it just depends on Tyrod seeing how juiced he is. But, I mean, when's he going to have an easier time? So if you've got Tyrod and playing him, this, you could get rewarded today. I think that over under at 46 is is reachable and uh you know can be exceeded there new orleans atlanta this is a low scoring below average game because atlanta's figured to be snuffed out ridley's gone uh ryan has had a struggle and new orleans d is pretty tough 27 15 uh touchdown difference New Orleans gets an easy Atlanta here, which is good. Uh, Simeon and Hill will probably be double teaming in packages and scenarios. So it's kind of hard to play either one. They both face an 88. Kamara gets an 88. It's a two score day for Kamara. Ingram could even collect in here. I would not shy away from playing Ingram. Quarterbacks, 91. The wide receivers gets an average, a little bit above average, 62. Callaway and uh, Taquan, I think, are worth uh, uh, some long shot streamers. Just don't know about the tight end. They have not been putting the tight end action together. I, I guess if you're really building a, a, a stack lineup here in daily fantasy, you might include that, but I'm not sure I would. Kicker's okay. You definitely want to play uh, New Orleans D and an 89. It's all day long play the New Orleans. Uh, Atlanta, a away game. Uh, that's bad. New Orleans is tough. 44 overall, and they're going to crush Mike Davis. Patterson is going to have to collect through passing, catching. Uh, Ryan's going to be under pressure all day long. If he can get away from pressure, he can collect on uh, the wide receivers here. I think Tanjay Sharp and Gage, I picked both of them up as plays this week, streaming gamble plays with Patterson as well. Uh, Pitts is going to be targeted, but he's going to have pressure from New Orleans, 29. So he may get attention, but I don't know if he'll break out for a score. Uh, he's definitely uh, has the potential and the pedigree and the talent. Just not sure this is his scenario today. Uh, avoid the kicker and uh, the defense unless you got to play them here. Uh, Atlanta could do better garbage time situation. It could, it you know, these two teams always play each other pretty hard. They just, you know, face each other twice. So this, this, this might surprise people, but I would not be messing with that over under. Uh, you know, Ryan could fold up like a cheap suitcase. So uh, Raiders over the Giants. Giants have lots of injuries. Uh, if the Giants could figure out a way to put it together and they had Barkley, they could win this game, but Barkley's not there. And I just don't know if Booker gives them enough firepower to surprise. If the Giants beat the Raiders and this is at home for the Giants, this wouldn't be, uh, this would not surprise me. It's an above average game. They do figure lots of passing and whatnot. So I wouldn't shy away from any of these. Giants play an easy Raiders. Raiders play a, an above average easy Giants. So again, it's one of these games where they have uh, easy defenses, but the offensive firepower is not there to collect and take advantage. At least that's the scenario that is being put forth here. Uh, 80 versus 71 is pretty much about the same scenario. 
Running backs on both sides should collect. Jacobs and Booker should probably score with an 84 and a 72. Passing's going to be a little bit more of a struggle between the two teams. Uh, Raiders do have an advantage. I think Braylon Edwards, Zay Jones uh, with uh, Ruggs out now. He's off the team. Uh yeah, I think uh, I picked Edwards up where I could. I think he could be a surprise streamer this week. Waller's going to have to fight through a 40, and Ingram for the Giants should uh, get attention, and maybe he scores this week. So I'm playing the tight ends if I, if I need to, certainly Waller and Ingram if I need a, a buy, and the wide receivers, let's see, Tony, I guess, uh, uh, let's see who else, uh, who, uh, whoever it is, is Galladay's playing maybe? He may wake up from his injuries enough to collect before maybe he gets injured again. I hope not, but he's just been injured so much. Shepard, I think, is out. I guess, is Slayton playing? Maybe if Slayton's playing, he could. There's a lot of possibilities there. Uh, for the Giants to collect. So this this may be a surprising game here for the Giants. They're predicted to lose, but they could this, this could be a surprise this week. Especially having home field advantage, that could really help. Uh, this is game 10. The Chargers, uh, Philadelphia, it looks like almost whoever's got the last... Uh, bit of the ball could could win it's figured to be a 51 so they're tough defenses but strong offensive uh players here so this is the opposite of the last game here as far as the matchup so we have tough defenses but we have great uh players here involved they both face uh 48 and a 36 uh, Chargers are playing away, so that never helps. Uh, Pittsburgh's playing at home. Eckler gets an 88. He could collect multi-scores. Uh, Philadelphia, I think uh, Howard and Boston Scott can uh, uh, score as well. So they're, they're, it looks like the game is set for lots of rushing and occasional passing to the tight ends. Take a look at how this scenario looks like Cook and Goddard figure in the passing. Looks like the wide receivers, Allen and Williams and Rager and Devona Smith are going to be under a lot of pressure from both defenses. So they're going to be limited in their opportunities. So the matchup suggests a balance of running or passing to the tight ends. You don't want to use either defenses. Philadelphia's kicker is fine. So that's kind of funny. I would definitely be using both tight ends here and both running back uh, cores. Kansas City and Green Bay. Green Bay has love. I think this was... Green Bay has an opportunity to score more than we probably think even with love. It's probably a coin flip on who wins. This could be really close. KC has been giving up the ball. So Green Bay is probably going to take advantage of that. This is predicted to be very high even with love here. Green Bay gets a 82 to fight through. Aaron Jones gets an average 53. Love gets us 92. If he's got talent, here we go. And Adams is back. And Lazard, I think, is back. And they've got Cobb. They've got, uh, uh, I don't know if, I know St. Brown's on there. Anyway, the tight end, Tanyan. But I think, was it Mercedes Lewis could be a surprise tight end if you're doing a, a contrarian snack with Love and his... Uh, wide receiver tight ends that could be a surprise daily fantasy stack for you definitely want to use green bay's d at 81 kc has been struggling giving the ball up 
they get an opportunity to uh, do what they need to do here. Uh, Williams should get an average game and score. Uh, Mahomes gets to 62. Tyreek Hill, 69. Kelsey, 76. I mean, he should bounce back. Tyreek Hill, this looks like a Kansas City type of game. Passing collections, and they're playing at home. They should. They should beat. Green Bay, but it just depends on how much turnover. If Holmes can limit himself to turnovers, then they should win. If he doesn't, Green Bay could surprise and shock folks. But really, the spread's pretty much a you pick them anyway. Avoid the kicker and the D. Arizona Frisco, it's another you pick them. Uh, good players, but uh, tough situations, at least for Frisco. Arizona, if they don't have Murray, then they could lose. I'm a, Cope McCoy uh, may not be able to take advantage of it. He's got a great, you know, Murray or McCoy's got a 100. And his, uh, if D Hop plays or not, and was it greens out? So we're talking Moore and Kurt. This is the week to play Kurt especially if D-Hop is out. Ertz gets an average game 46. I could see him scoring. I could see Kurt and Rondale more scoring. And I could see uh, Connor uh, keeping honest and Edmonds collecting passes out of the backfield and scoring. I would not use the kicker or the D much. San Francisco gets a tough situation, even if they have a home field and a potential advantage. Look at, uh, it's in the 20s, except for the wide receivers. So Samuel and Ayuk, you know, he woke up last week. He may be continued. They're saying Kittle may be back. Well, this is a tough game to come back to facing an 11. So I would, I would use Kittle if I got it, Kittle, but I wouldn't expect dramatic situation at all. Uh, this could go either way depending on Murray in or out. This is to me a game that's in flux and we uh, I would hate to be doing any prop bets or anything. This could, this could get really a squirrely game. This could be really a low scoring game or it could be really just crazy garbage time uh, ball flying left and right. It's hard to believe that it, you know, that the over unders is not is going to be near 47. I could see it way below or or above. So I'm not sure how I wouldn't play this. It's too risky. I'm sorry, too uncertain for me. Game 13 is predicted to be very high because the Rams should rough. Rough shot run over Tennessee, 35 to 20, a touchdown score, 54 over over under. Uh, good teams with against crappy D's. That's why it's extremely high scoring game. This is where you build your stacks, but everybody knows that. Tennessee gets an 80 overall. Uh, Whoever's taking Murray's place, McNichols, or whoever, it's uh, 65. Should be good. Ryan Tannehill gets an average game. His wide receivers get it uh, 70. Uh, the tight end could be tricky there. I don't know who Swain, Frisker, I don't know who's going to get it. That's the trouble. There really hasn't been a dominant uh, tight end here. Uh, wouldn't play the Tennessee D this week. Uh, figures to be a balanced rushing and passing to the wide receiver tight end kind of game. So Tennessee could score more than people think here. This could be a really point blowout game here. It's really interesting because the Rams D uh, is weak. Almost as uh, weak as Tennessee at a 77. So Rams should rock and roll. Henderson's going to have to work for his 
scores at 41, so I'm thinking Cooper Cup, Woods, and Higby probably is get attention, but he's going to have a hard time at 25. So I figure it's a multi-scoring Cup, Woods, kind of Van Jefferson kind of day. They could all score uh, one touchdown, some could even score two. This could be a really blowout passing uh, scenario with Stafford. He can deliver. This team's looking pretty pretty sharp here. Would not use the defense of the, the Rams here. So uh, two great teams with easy Ds. This is could be the highest scoring game of the week, and Tennessee could surprise folks. So I would not shy away from any player in on either team. On the other hand, this could be crazy low scoring. Ben has not been Ben. You, you keep saying this can't. This got to be his last year. Uh, prediction 27, uh, 14, uh, 40 points touchdown difference. Pittsburgh plays at home, gives them an advantage, but they both play a fairly uh, tough D, 47-45. Harris gets a 21, so he'll be catching passes to collect. Uh, Herbert or if Montgomery comes back, a 7. Boy, if I can avoid uh, Montgomery, if he comes back, I would just wait and see. Ben gets a 55 in average, and his wide receivers get an 85. So there's the connection. I don't see uh, the tight end. I know he'll get attention, but i do not not sure he is going to score here. Chicago uh, looks like the wide receivers should take advantage of this. That That's their shot to keep up with Pittsburgh. And I don't think many think they're going to be able to do that. They Mooney should collect. Uh, maybe this is the Allen Robinson week. It doesn't look like it to me. You definitely want Pittsburgh's D, and the kickers are fine. Uh, this could be a really low-scoring game. I wouldn't touch this, and I would try to avoid all but the obvious in here. If I could help it. Okay, that's my 10 cent tour here. Go check out the static version of these uh, figures on my fake pigskin article coming out today, as soon as I can wrap this up. Thanks for listening. I hope I helped the one or two of you that listen to me here. Uh, appreciate you hearing me drone on and on. Okay, check out my other podcast, Science of Fantasy with D Mike. He is a Two scientists going at it. Uh, we tend to do that early in the week. So check out our this week's podcast. You'll find that at Fake Pigskin as well. Thanks for listening. It's Dr. Bush signing off. Good luck, folks. <laughs>